Hello everyone, this is part of a problem solving series that would help you prepare for math competitions such as the AMC 10 and 12, the American Imitational Mathematics Examination and other contests and tournaments in the advanced middle school and high school level. In this particular session, we will be solving an algebra problem from the ARML competition. Here is a view of the problem. We would like to compute the smallest possible positive, I should say, integer n, such that each of these eight expressions are actually distinct integer values because the floor functions here are all uh, going to give rise to integer values. I would like to begin with just going to uh, define, so let's call it here that we have n, and obviously n is greater than square root n, and I'll just call it as g. Uh, I will proceed in a similar way, so knowing that I have seven different expressions, so that's n, that's g, that's f, e, d, c, b, and finally I'll call this very last expression as a. So knowing that they should be integers of distinct values, this ordering not naturally gives rise. But still there is something inherently uh, disturbing here. We have two expressions which are kind of hard to deal with. First we have a floor function and second of all we have radicals, a bunch of them actually. I don't like f dealing with floor functions and I certainly don't like dealing with radicals and I don't know how to handle them, them properly. So the best way to to deal with this would be to write equivalent expressions for each of these eight or seven uh, excluding the n expressions. Let's just begin with the first expression, say a is equal to the floor function of the eighth root of n. So interestingly this would be equivalent in to the following inequalities. So this, this basically means that um, a is less than a to the power 8. Recall that a was greater than or equal to 1 here. And notice that this condition here, this equation, is can be equivalently written into the following constraint. Less than a plus 1 raised to the power 8. And that's the crux move of this problem. So we are able to establish an equivalent form uh, and instead of using this very ugly uh, uh, expression we would just have um, two inequalities basically to represent the same expression and please try to convince yourself that that's the right way to go and this expression is sure enough equal to this condition given in this problem. Once this is established uh, we can do similar expression for uh, the other variables as well, such as b, huh? b to the 7, b plus 1 to the 7 power here. Obviously, b will be strictly greater than a, and but at the same time, it must be less than b to the 7, because b is already greater than 1 for sure, and so on. So we can find, we can represent similar expressions for c, c plus 1 to the 6 power, we can do the same thing for d, d to the fifth power, and so on. So I will not go further, obviously, as it would take too much time to write all these uh, inequalities. But then that should surely solve our problem. Uh, and the best way to deal with it, because we are interested in the smallest positive integer, and that would satisfy all these um eight uh, set of inequalities we can just uh, look at the smallest case so let's start with the case where n is actually equal to one and see if we can make use of this so when a is actually equal to one starting with the first condition we immediately uh, get that one is actually less than well less than or i should say equal to as well so this condition is important a is less than or equal to 1 to the power 8, which is strict, which is also less than or equal to n, which is strictly less than a plus uh, 1, which is in this case a is 1, so 1 plus 1 to the 8th power, which is 
uh, just simply 256. We already have now a bound for A. But then, uh, observing um, the case where, let's say, this line here, we can immediately establish that n is definitely greater than or equal to d to the 5. So let me carry this here. n is definitely greater than or equal to d to the 5. But then recall that d is, d is strictly greater than c, which is strictly greater than b, which is strictly greater than a. So therefore, d is at least 4. And so in that case, this is d to the 5 is at least, huh? so this is greater than or equal to uh, 4 to the 5th power in this case, and that number is simply too large, so it's equal to 10, 1024, definitely violates, so we are claiming at one occasion that n is greater than or equal to 20, 1024, but at the same time it must be less than 256, so the first case is, is definitely not possible, so we get a contradiction here. Let's check out the case where n is actually equal to 2. So is this case possible? So to begin with, again, we start with the first condition, 2a, uh, I mean, a itself, which is 2, is definitely less than 2 to the power 8, which is less than or equal to our n, which is strictly less than 2 plus 1 raised to the 8 powers, which is 3 to the 8 power, and that should give um, 65, 61. So that, that, that number here is 256. So here we have a bound for A actually. So we want, sorry, for, we have a bound for M and it's greater than or equal to 256 and it's definitely less than 65, 61. Okay, if A is equal to 2, then we can easily confidently say that B is at least greater than or equal to 3. In that case, um, B to the 7 is definitely greater than or equal to 2187. 2187. And therefore, this implies that n itself is greater than or equal to 2187. And we do not have a violation so far. So these two conditions do not uh, contradict each other. And then when we focus on the c itself, c can be greater than or equal to 4. Therefore, c to the 6th must be greater than or equal to 4096. And that would imply immediately that n itself must be greater than 4096. And still, we this condition is also possible. But then consider the following: look at the um, the value for for b, huh? three to the power seven, three plus one to the power seven, I should say, huh? So in this case here, uh, we would have um, that would come out as sixteen thousand. Uh, 384 or in a similar way also look at the case where huh? so 4 plus 1 raised to the sixth power that one is 15,625 we know that n being less than 6561 does not violate these two conditions either so our n is definitely acceptable so we have that therefore huh? let's write that down so n is definitely something between 4096 and less than uh, 6561 because again we are looking at the smallest value we can start for with 4096 so we can try 4096 so when n is actually equal to 4096 which is simply uh, equal to 2 to the power uh, 12 I believe then in fact we can check that all these give rise to different integer values um, you, you can easily check the corresponding values for the a the b the c yeah? so a would be in this case equal to 2 b will be greater uh, will be actually equal to 3 c would be 4 d would be 5 I believe e would be 8 and so on so we would get the remaining uh, values as well so you please uh, do the remaining calculations to confirm that when n is equal to 4096 we can in fact get eight different numbers here and that solves our problem so hope to see you guys in our next video